When we last left our intrepid investigators, they had just had a rather busy day. After having to find new accommodations given the state of Florida's manor, they split up, some going to the police to speak about the break-in, some investigating other avenues. Those who went to the police found out that not only had there been a break-in, but there had been a vandalism. The grave of Dr. Moish Farouk had been vandalized. Those who went elsewhere after finding the place thing, a place for them to settle in, they found that there was more to be learned in Alexandria's Egyptian University's library. After making a little bit of time there, the group found more talk of strange dreams, of interesting lights people had seen, and with a little bit of talk to a medical professional at the Egyptian hospital, they found that not only was it that the notes of the birth of Gwendolyn Farouk did not explain everything. They ex they found out that notes that were had originally hidden and had only recently come to light explained that Gwendolyn was indeed the daughter of Audrey Lee Howard, and Audrey Lee Howard herself had powers and abilities beyond mortal understanding. After a, another night's retire into Le their rooms at Le Metropoli, they had another dream of the gentle father, but also of the weeping mother. Some embraced them, some spurned them. And now we come to the next day. It's breakfast. Le Metropoli actually does have a decent uh, breakfast service. Those who want uh, foods of America or Britain are able to find them quite easily. Um, I'm obviously going for English muffins. Of course. It's my favorite food. Surprising nobody at all. <laughs> um, hmm. Jade takes a coffee. Uh, a cookie if she can, but this time she's like reading, but every now and then she'll like drift off and like stare and look around the room for a bit. And then she'll go back to looking into her book, but she's not fully as focused as she usually is reading her books. Understandable. And the rest of you. Uh, I mean, I think uh, Clara would just be having coffee and some toast. Or potentially just bread, depending on how much effort she feels like putting things in. I'm finding tea. I didn't get to drink last night, so coffee's not super necessary. The spread is decent. There is no real lack of anything you might want for tea, coffee, toast, English muffins, anything you might want. And you all see that not only are you there, but the uh, owner of Le Metropoli, the American, is also there, who is personally uh, speaking with and serving the guests. Hmm. Oh, that's Luffy. Oh, I decided to show up. Uh, with cookies in her mouth, she's gonna go, He's the owner? The American? I believe so, yes. You know, it's, it's quite rude to talk while you have food in your mouth. She's gonna uh, finish the food in her mouth and go, Oh, I'm 
so sorry. I, uh, sorry. I was, I guess I was getting comfortable. Um, sorry. I meant, is the, uh, uh she's just going to turn back to her book. <laughs> I am watching Jade like, what the hell is going on with her, but not saying anything. Also, I've completely forgotten the name of the guy. Jesse Lewis. Jesse Lewis. From Tennessee. Jesse Lewis. One thing that uh, some of you are likely having to look at again is the rapidly distributed newspaper saying that there had been an abduction yesterday of Gwendolyn Farouk who you had been told was away uh, uh, on a school trip into Cairo but in fact she had only, she had rather recently been taken um I know they had mentioned that the full paper would be out in the morning is the full paper out now yes it is uh, more of the same sort of thing, just a lot of people saying we don't know what is going on or what, and the police basically saying we were looking into this and they're uh, going to be likely closing the uh, university down for at least a day so that way they can speak to those who witnessed it, including the dean. That was going to be my next question. All right. Well, I feel like we should talk with the dean before anybody else gets a chance to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's suspicious. She... She was the one that told us that she wasn't here. But then, obviously, she was here. And then, if they're going to interview the dean, then, yeah, maybe we get to her first and get what we can. There's weird stuff happening here. Um... Given that it is the early hours, it's entirely possible that you could make your way to the university before the police have a chance to actually send out any uh, interrogators or investigators. Lovely. Shall we handle things? Yeah. And let's say extrajudicial, judiciously. Thank Nobody's you. going to die, probably. How about maybe I... Well, I don't really want to lead the way, but maybe I talk to her first? <laughs> She's only interested in talking to you, so you should definitely lead the way. <sighs> yeah, and then maybe back up if she decides to change the subject or something. Um, then maybe you guys... Hop in if you want, if you all want to come, of course. I'll I go. See. I don't know how useful I'll be, but I'll go. Yes. I see no reason why we can't all go. No? Alright, um, has anyone checked on Francois since, um, he was brought over? As if uh, on cue, Francois, you are able to make your way down to breakfast feeling a good bit better after having uh, a rather intense uh, bout of sickness. Just a, a small, uh, brief uh, stomach bug that seemed to almost chase away the dream that you were having last night. You remember faces and feelings of longing for family, but nothing, but not much else. Uh, he's gonna... Uh, join the ladies uh, at their breakfast room, but uh, obviously he uh, he's gonna join in a bit later. Um, while he does so, he's um, back to dressed in his normal uh, clothing. Uh, he's rubbing his neck, um, stretching, trying to get some of that uh, lingering pain and uh, soreness out of um, his shoulders, his neck. But uh, yeah, like you said, he's uh, uh, Feeling better, he's uh, ready to go again, and uh, he's gonna greet the uh, closest one of the ladies. Uh, good morning. Looks like I've uh, missed a lot. Thank you for looking out for me. Uh, merci. 
Of course. Yeah, J you've missed Jade a lot. was just about to lead an expedition over to the um, university if you'd like to join her. Oh yes, that's where where um, you went to yesterday and found the lead. Mm. All right, uh, lead the way, Madame Winner. Okay. Um, is there is there anyone who will not be joining uh, Jade to head to the university? I think Aurora is going to stay back. He's gonna go back to the cemetery. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll be back soon, uh, Aurora. Mm -hmm. Stay safe. Mm -hmm. We will begin with Aurora. Once again, the graveyard itself is calm, peaceful. The authorities seem to have, uh, by and large, departed after making sure that there was no nothing else of note to say uh, who or how someone might have done this. Someone might have uh, destroyed the gravestone of uh, Dr. Foruk. In the morning light, everything seems clearer, but also everything seems blander. There's less of that intense power you feel, as the powers of the dead often manifest greater when the sun is missing. Mm -hmm. What do you do? She's gonna go right back to his grave. And I know last episode you said that there was um that there was like a, a feeling of like nothingness there um yes she's gonna I wanna try to connect with um with that um with the with the earth around me again I wanna see if that still holds true if there's just like a, a lack of anything or if I can um or if I can finally maybe pull something now that like it's just only me and not me and somebody who's following me okay please give me a roll of night arts okay I believe that's at 70 for me so Um, fuck, 88, I... <sighs> um, yeah, no, that's really bad, actually. Um, no, I'm probably going to, um... I'm gonna burn a die. Which die would you um, like to utilize, and what power are you pulling from? I gotta see what we got. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I am going to pull, um, I'm going to pull a, um, um, Hmm. I can't really think of which ones would work in this situation except for door in the eye, and that's a D20. Uh. The sun is bright above you, but you're mm -hmm. also a, a solitary individual you're surrounded by gravestones and trees. You could also possibly use moth if we've put stuff on moth by now. The moth does have, have the dice for the for, uh that were used yesterday. Yeah, then I think I might. Yeah, I might use the moth. 
um, I'm gonna use one of the um, one of the fours from the moth uh, to replace the ten. Please. By all means, go ahead and roll. So that's a that's a thirty-eight. That is a success for me. Excellent. After having to take a moment to gather yourself, the brightness of the sun seems to almost be working antithetical to what you're trying. So you call upon whatever being gives you power when you cut your hair by pulling out a few, a small tuft of it at the end, digging out even the root. Like you feel it. You feel that same connection to the hollowed earth around you, to the dead that linger here, some at rest and others wanting something of you. But you also feel that nothingness, that intense lack of anything, where there is the uh, vandalized grave of Dr. Farouk. But not only do you feel that as you are able to focus and with the light above you, you can see that there is almost a sort of shimmering around the grave. Prismatic and vibrant. Like mm. it had like it had been burned into a pit of absence by light. I want to reach out and see if I can touch it. Like, I'm going to put my hand right in. You put your hand in, and you feel a searing agony, but also a sense of smugness as you feel a man's eyes on you within your own head and a vile, cruel grin. You shouldn't be here, doll. <laughs> and just as quickly as it's there, it's gone. But you still feel a bit of a headache in your in your own mind. Oh. Could you please put down a searing headache and the injuries on your shit? Okay. okay. I think uh I think after 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 that she's just gonna like look look around and um uh, see if she can find maybe like a a drugstore to go buy some good old fashioned um uh painkillers you know that good good old fashioned um <laughs> oxy the strong stuff <laughs> yeah the strong stuff of course Give there is a, a uh. There's an apothecary not too far along, mm -hmm. uh, a pharmacist that is able to very easily get you some very strong painkillers. Though he suggests not drinking it, with, not using, utilizing it with alcohol, and making sure that if you are going to use it, that it's perhaps closer to the evening because this will not knock you out but relax you intensely. <laughs> she's going to smile, then nod, and then the moment that she's out of the. Uh, out of the um out of the shop she's gonna pop one of the pills absolutely going back to the egyptian university jade and her cohorts are all making their way there the students are all gone and it doesn't seem like the police have arrived yet for their investigations you have the general run of the place and you there are signs that can lead one to the dean's office so it's fairly easy to find her there she is busy reading through uh a small book that seems to just be taking all of her focus but when she hears her door open she looks up and seems stunned and maybe a little afraid Oh, uh, Miss Miss Warner, you are 
you are back so soon. I am sorry the university campus is closed for the day. Um, pardon me, sorry. Uh, I, uh, I get, I understand that it's closed. I just have a couple of questions, um, about kind of, I guess, about what you liked about my mother's work. Do you think maybe I can come in and talk? Oh, uh, yes. Certainly, of course. Though, I will let you know, if the police arrive, I will need to give them attention as they are currently investigating. I'm sure you've gotten the, the recent newspaper, yes? No, actually, um, I when I woke up this morning, I kind of, I don't know, I had a bit of an... I don't know, a weird dream and epiphany and I was like, I I just have to talk to you and you seem so um, I guess you, I don't know, I felt like there was a connection with us and I just feel like I had to talk to you, so no, I haven't really seen any of the newspapers yet. Why? What happened? Uh, there had, uh, there was an abduction. One of my students, one of my brightest pupils, she was taken from the campus. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Jade's gonna kind of make her way in and kind of... Well, before she makes her way fully in, she's gonna, like, ch like make it look like she's gonna look out in the hallway to be like, Oh, like she's keeping an eye out that she'll come in. But mostly she's trying to look at the group that came with her and kind of like wink her eyes. Doesn't really know what she's trying to say to you guys, but she's like winking her eye and then like walking inside the room and being and like, oh, uh, I guess we don't want to talk about this. With the door open, I'm just going to close it a little bit. And she'll close, slightly close the door behind her and then walk into the office to sit in front of the dean uh yes who who was taken if you don't mind talking about it uh it was actually the it was my pupil Gwendolyn Farouk she had been and she begins to try to center herself, but she seems basically on the verge of tears. She had trusted me. I was trying to protect her. She had said she felt that men were following her. And I could not stop them. The, I had tried to throw so many off her trail, and yet in broad daylight they come and they steal her. Oh, you, you couldn't have known. Um, is that why you said to us that she wasn't here? Yes. That is why. She, she had been in hiding at that point of the day, but then not long after you had left, she was taken. Do you mind? Um, I have some of my um uh, travel partners with me. Do you mind if I invited them in so we can all talk together? Yes, I can see that you are not with the men who took her, who stole no. her from us. No, not at all. Um, excuse me. She's gonna get up and then open the door and be like, you guys can come in. <laughs> and everyone just piles on in. She does not seem to be even really recognizing that there are a lot of you now in the office with her. Um, what's the Dean's name again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Her name, her name is, uh, if you want to just call her by her title and last name, her name is Dean Hosnani. Dean Hosnani. Okay. Uh, Dean Hosnani, this is my group that I'm with, um, and she'll introduce everyone, um, the best she can. And we just want to know, I guess... Why was she in hiding? Do you know why? Do, is, can you take us to her room or something? I can take you to her room, but I do not know what you might find there. She had said she felt that there were men following her after her in, after she had gone to try to find more information about the, the lighthouse of Alexandria. Hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't happen to know anything about the men, now, would you? Uh, I did not see the men well myself, but I saw that they had taken her into a black motor carriage. I saw the last four digits of the license plate. Can we have those? Yes, yes, and she uh, writes down the last four digits quickly and passes you a small scrap of paper that has the digits. Uh, one, eight, three, six. Mm. Um, Dean, why, what's so, I mean, I read some of the work you brought to me, but what is so important about this lighthouse? You think, maybe. Some people see it as a great historical uh, aspect of Alexandria. They do not like people who are not truly, wholly native to Alexandria looking into it. There are tourists, of course, but then there are the others, the researchers, the adventurers who wish to find out more about ancient histories. Histories that were lost to the world. I do not know much about such things, but Gwendolyn spoke constantly, highly about the lights and the light that used to be atop the lighthouse. How it was more than just a sign from the for to guide ships into harbor. It was something more. It was something more. Something more. Something beyond mortal comprehension. Mm. She said she felt that light when she was there. Huh. Uh, Jade's gonna look to the group. Um. And then back to the Dean. And go, have you been having weird dreams too? No, I have not. Though many of my students have said uh, they have felt weird dreams. And in these dreams seen rather odd lights. I, it is all too much for me though she Gwendolyn had a confidant someone she spent much time with speaking of her more esoteric studies it was uh, Madame Eugenie at the Zizania Theatre an odd woman and I do not often truck with such people, but she had some kinship with her. Hmm. In the theater. Ugh. Um, Dean, is there anything else you're possibly holding from us? We want to find her. We, well, 
we were told to find her mom, but now she's missing, so we want to find Gwendolyn, hopefully, or at least help the the uh, authorities find her. Is there anything else you can that you're holding on to or something? No, nothing that comes to my mind, but if, well, there was one other book that I had left off of the list because it was rather gauche. Something that Gwendolyn had only looked at once and then left. What was it? She goes back to her desk and picks up a rather small uh, book that looks to be almost embroidered in silver. And while you can't see the title, you can see the author, uh, Jade. The author is Christopher Elopoli, the same author that wrote Traveling at Night, one of the series you've been working on. Uh, yo, give me that book. Um, <laughs> uh, Jade. Ooh. Hmm. I want this book. Jade wants this book. Fascination hmm. wants yeah, this book. Fascination wants this book. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Okay. Um. Huh. Maybe Jade's gonna hold a hand out for the book. Uh, um, given everything that's been going on and how Jade's mood keeps changing every time she stumbles onto one of these weird books, would it be safe to say that we may have noticed that these books are changing the way that Jade acts and behaves? <laughs> uh, generally, yes, though she's been acting that way generally around books, period. So it's not like this is a new thing. This is very much she is a she is very big on books, it seems. Okay. It might be a little more intense than before, but like marginally so. OK. Uh, first of all, I going to uh, whisper to I Margaret. will not try to save her. <laughs> uh, first of all, I going to uh, whisper to Margaret. Was she like this uh, yesterday? Like what? Being, uh, being enamored with books. She's been like this since I've met her. Might be a little bit more intense today than it was yesterday, but... Peculiar. I have given you all access to Artifact Illuminate. Thank Which you. is the excerpt from the book. She says, you can, you can take it. I, I do not want it in my library anymore. It has always created scandals from people thinking such odd things. I do not want it anymore. Um, yeah, I could take it off your hands for you, and, um, uh, yeah, I could, I can, yeah. And <laughs> she's gonna take the book and, like, start, like, looking and get over, um, but then, like, catch herself and go, uh, thank you for, uh, thank you for the help, um, Dean. Of course. I hope that you are able to find Gwendolyn. I hope that nothing awful has happened to her. I do not want to have failed her so totally. We'll try our best. Um, good morning, or I guess see you later. Uh, Jade's just gonna head out. She looks to the rest of you and says, Please keep an eye on Miss Warner. That thirst for knowledge could drown her. I thought there was a way to stop it, I would. It's the same thirst for knowledge that that drowned your pupil. Or what got her taken, at least. I think. 
Is it possible that she went with him willingly? I do not think so. Her friends, when I spoke to them, said that they they were trying to fight them off. They were trying to get them to leave her alone, but they they were overpowering her. I see. Very well. I would be a better host, but given what has happened, I would ask that you politely leave my office so I may I may prepare for the police. Of course. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, as you all file out, she closes the door behind you all. I think I may go pay our American friend a visit. I've actually been planning on doing the same. I'll keep he an and I eye. Share a certain. Um, shall we say it a quirk of our past? Yes, uh, you ladies proceed. I will keep an eye on Miss Warner. <laughs> Jade has already opened the book and been like reading a little bit through it as much as she can and trying to understand um, stuff. But then she does pause for a moment and go, um, maybe we can meet up with Aurora um, and we can all head to the theater. Uh, um, the dean said Gwendolyn had uh, someone she was, I guess, kind with? In the, the in uh, this theater year, Madam, you said Eugene, correct? Eugenia. Madam Eugenie. Eugenie. E Eugenie. Okay, Madam Eugenie. So, uh, Margaret and Clara, do you want us to wait for you before we go to the theater? I don't think any of us should be going anywhere on our own. <sighs> Absolutely not. Okay. So we can head over and get Aurora and then wait for everyone and we all go together? Sounds like that should be a good plan. Great. Right. I get more time to read my book. You all head back to La Metropole and you see that uh, Aurora has made it back there and is currently uh, feeling a little bit better than she was after she originally left the. Uh, graveyard. It's not an intense pain now, it is more just a gentle throbbing in your head, like in the front of your head, behind your eyes. Uh, coffee is helping, a little. Mm -hmm. mm. And, uh, you, uh, Lewis is there, and running the front desk. It seems like he is, uh, generally keeping things uh, keeping uh, costs at a minimum by doing most of the work himself I'll let you start the conversation since you seem to have so much in common with the man well I will say the things we share in common aren't exactly the best for polite conversation when has that ever stopped you before well, when we're in public, mostly. So ask him to step into another room. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll walk up to the desk and wait impatiently. He, uh, immediately looks up and says, Oh, uh, ma'am, how can I help you? Is something wrong with your room, or can I get you anything? Oh, no, no, nothing of the sort, um... So you remember how I requested that we have the chance to talk privately, yes? Uh, yeah, I do remember that, yes. Would you like to have that conversation now? Yes, I would. Um, me and my colleague Margaret here, uh, would like to speak with you for a bit if you have time. Of course, and he will, uh, look to Margaret and then, uh, give a small bow. Ma'am? Morning. 
and he will uh, go ahead and uh, lead you both to his office, which is, while the the desk outside was fairly very neat and tidy, the office is kind of in shambles. It's very busy with so many books open, papers strewn all over the place with all types of uh, scratchings and writings on them. Some of them are in English, some of them are in Greek, and even uh, you've even seen some in a very odd scripture that doesn't look like anything you've seen in normal writings. And I glance at the ones that are in Greek. You absolutely can. Uh, What is your level of Greek? 50. You can see that a lot of them are uh, reports from friends in Greece and in other areas of Europe that are just generally keeping him updated on a group that you all that you see is mentioned as being called the Church of the Bright Edge. Anything in Arabic or French? Uh, a few little writings here and there, uh, reports from France about the church, and then in Arabic, uh, mostly r- uh, keeping tabs on one uh, assassin called Victor. Okay. Well, uh, we're in private now, so I see no reason to uh, hide things. What exactly is it that you're running from? He looks to you, and his friendly demeanor lessons and dims to the point where it's just left he's just left with uh he kind of looks like a cornered animal i suggest that you tell me what exactly it is that you are so interested in ma'am well a part of me curious if we're running from the same thing to be honest He looks to you. Give me a roll of scoundrel. We'll say that you'll have it with disadvantage because he he feels back into a corner. Aww. Sad. Hmm. There are things you could burn to fix that. There are. What do you need to beat? Uh, a 60. I think I'm gonna... I'm gonna risk the d6 from the lion smith. Uh, for... Okay. Calling upon the conflict that... It seems that we're both involved in. Uh, just in varying ways. Mm-hmm. And hope to god that I don't roll a d... And I don't roll a six. Didn't roll a six. One less uh, more die from the lion smith taken away. One moment while I make the adjustment. You're running from them too, ain't you? Well, I'm suddenly running from something. Are we talking about this Church of the Knife's Edge or something? He looks pointedly towards uh, Margaret. The Church of the Brat Edge. Yeah. Right Edge, Knife's Edge. I'm not re- re- uh, running from them. Just well read. Yeah, you, uh, you don't seem the type that they go after. They come after you too, Miss Castillo. Any interest in men willing to try to teach you all kinds of ways to harm others? All kinds of ways to take what you want? 
or was it a woman? Short, bobbed hair, bobbed hair, eyes like snake venom burning in your veins. I don't particularly remember much, but suddenly, I suddenly had my fair share of people trying to teach me how to hurt people better. And I wouldn't be surprised if they happened to be a part of the same group. Oh, if they were trying to teach you all kinds of things that even soldiers nowadays don't know, then you can bet your ass they were part of the church. What exactly is it, is it that you're looking for from me, ma'am? If I'm going to be completely honest, your assistance in a matter that we've seem to have found ourselves in the middle of. And what, pray tell, is that? Well, of course you heard about it. Uh, the abduction of Gwendolyn Farouk. Um, we, uh, that being my associate Margaret and I, as well as a few others, are here searching for her mother. Uh, one Audrey Lee Howard? Eh. Trust me, you don't want to be looking for her. And you uh, definitely don't know if you want to be looking for Gwendolyn no more, either. It ain't the church that's got her, it's the Endeavor Lodge. Yeah, part of what I was worried about was the fact that it wasn't the church that had her. Assuming... Well, my assumption is that Miss Howard is well on her way to getting what she wants. And I feel like that isn't good for any of us. I don't believe it would be, especially not for Miss Farouk. So what exactly is it you want me to do? I can tell you where to find, well, at least where the Endeavor Lodge will be, not tonight, but tomorrow. And I can tell you, they got some business happening at the harbor tonight, too. Where, where are they going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow, a good number of them are going to be over at the uh, Officers Club. Of course, a lot of them naval types, the admirals and the captains, all of them are part of the lodge. Use it to survive all them biz, all that business during the, the Great War and such, of course, you know what I mean. Some of them will be there, some of them are here will be at the Grand Ball that's being planned going out in a small island out on the bay, near uh, the same island where the lighthouse is, given how the water how the water's been arising lately. Well, Lady Wyndham, were there any questions that you had for Mr. Lewis here? Um, I am currently looking around the room. It, like, does he have like um? <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy. Uh, any like weapons on display? Uh, he doesn't. But seeing your eye looking about, he says, "If you're looking for something to protect yourself, I got that. But I don't keep it out in the open. You know, people around here, they ain't so liberal." as America when it comes to making sure that the people are armed. I imagine not many places are quite as liberal as America is when it comes to that. Unfortunate, but I make do. If you're looking, I got something I can give you. I'd appreciate it. When people getting snatched up and kidnapped, I'd like to take at least someone with me. What is your preferred method of ensuring to do so, madam. I have any type of firearm, really. My family's a hunting family. 
he uh, reaches to the side of his desk and hits a small hidden lever and a drawer pops out that he pulls out and there are several revolvers and a uh, what looks to be a derringer pick your poison though if I may make a suggestion I would suggest the Webley Mark IV fantastic little break action should put down most anything given the 38 caliber round so we're, we're going to pretend that I know as much about guns as my character does. I just need something that's small enough that I can hide it like in a purse or something. <laughs> uh, small, if you want small enough for like a clutch, that would be the Derringer. If you want something that you might be able to hide like in a uh, like a uh, thigh uh, uh, holster, perhaps instead, then you the Webley could do it. But it would be a, it would be a little bit harder to conceal. The Derringer is very easy to just put into a clutch, pull it out, and shoot someone with it. Um, Though it's also a much smaller caliber. Then, oh, I mean, not every purse has to be a clutch. So it's true. Um, well, yeah, I'll I'll take I'll take the thirty eight then. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily going to be carrying a clutch everywhere I go, so. He will g- give you the 38 as well as a uh, speed loader, a box of extra ammunition, and a uh, holster. He's like, if you, if you, I might suggest this could go quite well underneath the dress, right, right around the thigh. And a lot of time thinking about my thighs, do you? And I'm like already kind of like inching up my skirt to put it into place, like completely without shame. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking about where people might be hiding implements to bring my end, madam. Oh, goodness. N- no sense of humor at all. Not when it comes to this, no. And he will uh, look to Clara and just with a smirk will... Uh, flick his wrist, and out comes a rather large bowie knife that he just stabs into the into the desk. Uh, I would like to check where I keep my knife. Yours is still on you. That's his. Okay, that's his. <laughs> his, his has a pearl handle on it. Oh, fancy. If any of the rest of your n- number needs something, then I am happy to oblige. Though, of course, that uh, shooting piece is going to run you three pounds, madam. Oh, apologies. I was muted. Um, Of course. And I will hand him over the money from my purse. It's not like I'm hurting for hurting for funds. Absolutely. He will take it and just smile and say, I'll go ahead and just comp you your rooms for last night. If you all come back here, I will be asking to for pay for the next for the following night in case you uh, bring the Endeavor Lodge back here with you. Mm hmm. Now we now look at Clara. Or was there something else you wanted to discuss? Well, I am a bit curious about well, the writing. I can't read, but I imagine that'll take quite a while to explain. So we can always wait for enough time. I'll be here, and he will. Uh gently guide the two of you out of his office and uh, lock it behind him. What are the chances he's gone by morning? I think that depends on how much trouble backwards. It seems like the paranoid type. Of course, I looked into transportation out of the city and there's very little leaving for the next few days, unfortunately. So you may be stuck here.
Well, let's hope that he doesn't regret trusting us too much then. If he's stuck here, that means that, well, we're stuck here with him. Yes, that was that was the point. I suppose we should find the others then. Hmm. Hope they haven't caused too much trouble. Out in the uh, cafe of the hotel, uh, Aurora, you're feeling much better. The throbbing has lessened intensely with enough coffee and medication put into your system. And you're definitely feeling alive again after that uh, rather off uh, rubbing against the powers that be. Hmm. Uh, Jade, you have managed to get through the book while also looking over the uh, excerpt that had been taken uh, note of within its pages. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of interesting information about uh, beings that are called Alukites. Mm -hmm. And especially one thing that keeps getting mentioned is a particular sin called the Crime of the Sky. Yep. Not much about, uh, truly about like what else it could entail, but it keeps getting mentioned. Um, one part that stuck out to her that can that connects a little bit with some of the stuff we've all been noticing and seeing was um, the little note that says, "Hideous prospects of ours turned alukite. What then would they devour?" Um. She's now thinking about the card that we found with, I believe, Kronos, correct? Kronos devouring his children. It's yes. said family first, didn't it? Yep. So she's connecting. Hopefully, she's con starting to connect stuff like that. But she's fully been talking to herself, muttering to herself while reading through everything and like making notes in the book. Um, and she's like, oh, and what does this mean? What does that mean? And what's this? And and especially the parts that's like, um, like they've made it, they forbid men to lie with women and women to lie with men. And they say it's better for men and men to be together and women and women to be together. So she's just like, why? Like question mark, look up later, like all this different stuff. So, but right now she's mostly connecting the if there was red string, it's connected around the devourer and would be connecting to the Kronos eating uh, his children or whatever that was. So you've got one hell of a murder board going on in your head at the moment. Yes, and but she's also muttering out loud to herself as well. So everyone could possibly probably hear her mur murder board that's happening in her head. Yep. And uh, Margaret and Clara come back uh, to hearing the muttering of J of J to herself. How is it that every time I see her, she seems more manic than she was before? Uh, I would imagine at least this time it's because of... Um, do you reckon we should stop her? And, I mean, do you have any suggestion as to how? Oh, I suppose that's fab because all of my suggestions that we not mess around with the things that we don't understand have been um, ignored. And now she's like this. Yes, well... The only thing I can think of that's... We rip the books from my possession, but... With her being like this, I, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't trust her. Not trying to kill me for it. Mm. Hey, darling. Uh huh. Would you mind if I had a look at the book? Um. I mean, you've had it all morning. I think you can share, can't you? Uh, it's just I'm at this. Um, she looks like she's fully struggling with wanting to just be like, no, but she's also still trying to be polite. 
and she'll eventually just kind of be like, uh, yeah, but just don't, uh, move any of my notes, please. Well, you wrote them down, dear, so I don't think I could. But, you know, just in case it, like, smudges and then it could possibly cover some of the words in the book and then I might Miss not. Miss Warner, your notes know. will be all right. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, here, you can, you can take it, um, yeah, no, that's fine. I am going to take the book and, um, kind of go to sit at a different table. Um, Aurora's there, right? Yes, Aurora is there, as is, uh, Fran uh Francois. Aurora's in the room, high out of her mind. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go and sit down with Aurora and Francois and um, kind of lean over and very quietly um, in hopes that Jade does not overhear. It might be time to take Miss Warner out for a bit of a walk. Give her brain a moment to catch up with all that it's absorbed. Yes, I've been keeping an eye on her. She uh, seems to be very intense. Mm -hmm. I would just be careful um, to keep her away from the graveyard. Oh, I was asking if you two would mind taking her out for a bit. Uh, oh, I'm not leaving this chair until I can completely. So, uh, well, what um, did you do to yourself? Um, I went to go and inspect Mr. Uh, I want to go and expect Mr. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> These painkillers, I think I'm going to stop taking them for the time being. They make me feel nice, but they they, they kind of make me. Um, anyway, <laughs> I want to go take a look at at uh, Mr. Um, I almost want to call him Farquad. Um, Farouk. <laughs> Dr. Farouk. Dr. Farouk. Dr. Dr. Farouk. Doc yeah, Dr. Farquaad. Um, uh, I went to go take a look at um, Dr. Freak's grave, and I had a bit of an experience that left me with a pounding headache. And um, You went alone and got hurt, and now you're out of your mind on some sort of medicine. Hmm. More so, I have experiences that most people, when I try to explain it to them, think that I'm crazy. So, I'm not going to bother trying to explain myself, because I already know that I will come off as crazy. I just had a moment at the graveyard, I got a pounding headache. Can we all agree not to go anywhere alone anymore? The young woman that we're looking for was kidnapped forcibly yesterday. Yes, yes, I'll be for the best. I believe um, we should head to the Was she walking too. alone? No, but she also wasn't necessarily expecting to be accosted because she was with people. I and Clara have taken some measure of... We've acted to make sure that we can protect ourselves and those around us. But walking around on your own wasn't a wise idea. I wasn't walking around alone. I went... You went to the graveyard where which these people have a, gone. Which is only a ten minute walk in broad daylight. It doesn't matter. It's still a place where these people have gone and destroyed property. And you got hurt while you were there. I it may not have get... been something that we could have prevented, but it still wasn't wise to go alone. I mean, to be fair, I was going to get hurt no matter what. I mean... When you do what I do in my line of work, you put yourself in all sorts of danger. Not that you would understand. 
no, I'm not um, not prone to doing things that will also put the, those around me in more danger. Did I put you in any danger? If you had gotten captured, you would have. We're already all in an awful lot of danger for even agreeing. Come here. Every move that one of us makes can potentially impact those around us. We need to be very well aware that it's not just our lives we're playing with them. Then allow me to do my job in peace. Take someone with you. So there's at least less of a chance that you're going to get snatched off the street. I am... Um... I think you underestimate how much I'm able to protect myself. I think you I overestimate yourself. Clearly. Because you came back like this. Mm -hmm. You can barely stand up on your own right now. And at that, she's going to stand up and start walking perfectly fine. <laughs> well, chop, chop. We've got a job to do. And where were you planning to go next? Because you haven't I'm... been with the rest of us to figure out what any of us have found out. You've been off doing your own thing. Yes, and I'm off to an occult shop. Of course. Because there's other things that are feeding into whatever is going on. That Because you have to go off and do things on your own. You, you seem incapable of being with the rest of us and well, making sure... Are you sure, sure that about that? I've been with the group the almost the entire time. Every single time I'm with somebody, I'm, uh, I'm... Every time I almost go out, I'm with somebody. Clara, Jade... Just because I'm not with you all the time doesn't mean that I'm not with anybody. I decided to go off and do one thing by myself and you're castrating me like I'm some... Like I'm some uh, unruly girl going out in the middle of the night by herself to go get drunk and tipsy and sleep with whoever she... God knows where. The only thing I said to start all of this was, can we all agree not to go out alone anymore? And I, you know, I am fine with not with it going, being with other people. I've been with other people the entire time. The one time, the one time I go off by myself. Hell, even last night I went off to go and inspect, and I uh, saw Miss Jade with me. I, I'm never alone. Yes, and the one time you. On your own, you came back injured, full of painkillers. I don't think it's unreasonable for us to be concerned. I saw a man in my head smirking almost sinisterly. Asked me what I was doing here, and that's how I got the headache. You're one of those people who just doesn't want to take respon any sort of responsibility. Hmm. Like I said, lead it to the um, ones who choose to stay blind to be the first to accuse. Well, choosing to stay blind has managed to keep me alive this long, so... And I'm, and I'm alive perfectly well and happy, and I don't keep blind. Ladies, please, what's, uh, what's done is done. If, uh, if need be, I can accompany uh, Miss Roberts to the uh, cult shop. If not, then we'll move on to where we're we supposed to go next, the theater, perhaps. Uh, and then we need to make sure we're at the harbor no later than 6 p.m. tonight. Yes, yes. Time is uh, running short. We should make our moves as soon as possible. Yes, the lighthouse. We're we not going to, go to, the to the lighthouse. Light but we have to. We are That's... not going to the lighthouse. It's the next step, though. No, it's, it's not. No. It's the next thing that got her snatched. We're not recreating her steps and doing the same things to ourselves. 
Hmm. Okay. Okay. Now I believe we should go speak with this Miss Eugenie. See what she has to say about that. I agree. And perhaps see a show, give everybody a chance to wind down a little bit. We've all been rather on edge, and for good reason. But mm. acting like this, we're never going to get anything done. And odds are the entire thing is going to burn for it. You all did mention a casino. Could we go to Casinos won't be open at this hour. Oh, so that means we couldn't go. Okay. But perhaps, perhaps in the evening, after everything else is done, if there's time. I do want to see the officers come. I at least know how to operate that way. They're in places like that. Same with the ball. Okay. Hmm. A cult shop or theater? Where do I want to go? I think Jade is going to go with... I think she wants to follow the book. So she's well, going... The, the book is going to the theater. <laughs> yes, so she's going to go to the theater. Um, so... Yes. How far apart would the occult shop slash theater be? I'm just gonna see where the occult shop was. Uh, the occult shop is in the same general vicinity of the theater, I think. Okay, so we're not too far from each other. We are now going to start off by going to the occult shop with Miss Roberts. And I believe it was Francois who decided to go with her. Actually, can we swing back around um, later? I Sorry. Yes, we can. And then, uh, Francois is actually going to go to the uh, theater with wherever else is going there. Yes. So, heading to speak to uh, Madame Eugenie at the Theatre Zizinia. Heading there, you can see that... The theater itself has blown glass lamps outside in the Greco-Roman facade. Uh, you can hear crackling music from a hidden gamophone, which never, which seems to just keep going and going. Uh, as you head inside, you can see that the stage is bare, apart from uh, a children's chest of drawers. Flickering, uh, flickering projector makes it almost look like a film. The word dinner hangs in vast golden letters at the back of the stage. And... You can see that uh, up above the ceiling seems to have uh, a perfectly formed, it seems to be small and perfectly formed like a pithy full, a symbol that uh, looks to be just a general, a sort of symbol of the Greek pantheon above you. Uh, you see uh, the proprietress uh, Eugenie Jeun, who wears a lot of makeup who is, she looks almost impossible to age. She could be 30, 50, or even 70. The amount of makeup she's wearing makes her seem so young. Uh, and you can see that she just has a very vibrant, bright smile on her face. And when you all approach, she turns to you all and smiles and says, Oh, uh, good, good evening. Uh, and she just checks her watch. Oh, my goodness, it has only c come to the afternoon. Oh, how time flies. How can I help all of you? Just as a, as a reference, um, I would have caught up Francois on the way because these are his people. I assume he'd probably be better at talking to them than I would. That's absolutely fair. I've always been a patron, not a, not a member, so. Yeah, a patron of the arts, not an artist yourself. Yes. Absolutely fair. Does uh, Francois actually know her? Uh, uh, you know? Not like personally, but by reputation. Uh, Eugenie Jeun is known for being the proprietress of this 
uh, theater, and also someone who has put on a lot of plays that would largely be seen as uh, verging on on being gauche. Yeah. Rather, a f- plays that almost that some would seem to be dreadful or rather unhappy, but have their own sort of macabre artistry. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Francois will take the lead on this one. Uh, he's going to approach uh, Eugenie. Uh, yeah. uh, going to greet her and uh, uh, basically ask for... Um, uh, sorry, trying to think uh, how to start this. Um, uh, actually, you know... Um, uh, on the way there to the theater, uh, uh, Francois is going to coordinate with the group um, uh, to come up with a plan of like, or what to ask and uh, what to investigate. Well, um, the dean said that uh, this lady was, uh, I guess, a confidant for Gwendolyn. So maybe, uh, since you're, I don't know, a, well, you're a dancer, maybe you can get more information about, about like Gwendolyn and her connection. And if she knew perhaps why they're after Gwendolyn or maybe anything about Gwendolyn, to be honest, um, or her studies, if she told her about her dreams, her studies, stuff like that. Uh, yes, I just don't want to be too direct if uh, she's in with the kidnappers, if she's in league with them. Um, mm. Don't want to tip her off that we're looking for her. Um, mm. Flip side, tipping her off may actually open up an avenue that we didn't have before. As of right now, we have no idea who these people are or where they are. If she thinks that she's been found out, she may go running back to them. That is true. You could also ask her if uh, there's like any ghost stories or stuff about the um, the lighthouse or about stuff that's happened here, because then maybe we can also get a little bit of deeper information about um, the other happenings here. You no, know, I, I, I think, from our from our other companions, I think it's safer that we leave the lighthouse alone for now, for time being. And uh, I suppose we can focus on uh, Gwendolyn. I suppose um, a direct approach, like Margaret suggested, would be the best. Okay, just offering. I'm very much in favor of avoiding anything to do with the lighthouse, and I'm looking at Jade because this this person who seemed weird but mostly sane is uh, manic. Quick, quickly losing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very well. So, um, uh, back at the uh, theater. Um, uh, like I said before, Francois is gonna approach uh, Eugenie. Uh, I'm gonna greet her. And say uh, uh, bonjour, uh, Madame Eugenie. Um, I am uh, Francois Brisbois. Um, you know, I have heard of your uh, place here in Alexandria. Your reputation precedes you. As does yours, Mister B- Mister Brisbois. I have seen much of your dancing it's quite talented quite skilled i definitely think that you are wasted on your audience though if you came to dance for me who knows you might find that our dances and our plays are much more rewarding oh i appreciate someone who finally has an eye for the uh finer arts uh, however that is not uh, the purpose of my visit today um my companions and i um we're actually looking for a young woman named uh gwendolyn uh gwendolyn 
I believe she is a uh, friend of yours. Young Miss Farouk. Yes. yes. Have you heard anything of her? She has been uh, kidnapped. Yes, I actually heard the commotion and saw a bit of the event itself. It was quite tragic. I was visiting a friend, a different friend, and unfortunately I saw only the tail end of it. I heard her uh, furious, not scared, truly, flailing her arms and trying to fight off the two rather timid men who were her abductors. Have you seen where they are taking her? Unfortunately, no, though they seemed to go off into the direction of the tomb. Is there a check that we can do to see if she's lying to us? Because this is a mm -hmm. very different story yeah. than what we got yeah. from. You absolutely may. Go ahead and roll me uh, intelligence. Oh goodness! Of course, of all of the th of all the things. Or if you're good Gee. with it, you can also do a uh, scoundrel. All right. Well, I can do that one. I'm definitely rolling intelligence. <laughs> I suck at either, so. Uh... Oof. Um, uh, I'm assuming that's bad. <laughs> that is bad. Uh, I'm I'm gonna roll something bring that down because that's not good uh i'm gonna snatch a d4 from the red grail um because we are in a theater surrounded by people who go to those sorts of high society parties and that's half of where they make their living so it's true Uh, I see Jade just has us completely covered well, here. I still fail, but I don't. I, it's not a 66. So <laughs> it's a 46 now. Fair enough. And I not got as bad as it could have been. <laughs> Jade, you are absolutely certain that she is telling you the truth. Okay. But you also think uh, that the uh, Dean was telling you as best of the truth as she could muster with a mix of what had happened and possibly, if well, your readings are to be believed, what could have been used to sort of alter what she saw or what she thought she saw. Okay, gotcha. Eugenia, on the other hand, is crystal clear. Cool. Ah, very well, very well, uh, Miss Eugene. Uh, uh Miss Werner, uh, have you, uh, did you notice something? Hmm? Have I noticed anything? Eugene oh, yes. is now, uh, looking at Jade directly and just says, Hmm, come here, and she will move, like, into Jade's space and just, like, lift her chin up and look into her eyes. Oh, you've got a burning in you. Too, a little can go a long way, but too much can burn you away, my dear. Um, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm right, Jay? right. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, introduce each other. Uh, uh. Eugenie, this is Jade Werner, a uh, notable scholar from the U.S. Um, and Jade, this is uh, uh, Madame Eugenie, a uh, notable uh, priorityist here in Alexandria. Uh, uh, what, is, uh, what do you mean about burning? There's nothing burning here. Perhaps not in the most literal sense but there is a light behind those eyes that will threaten to turn everything else golden he's gonna look to the group 
uh, and then look back at this lady and kind of go, do you know about... Nate, I swear to God, if the next words out of your mouth are the lighthouse, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> She's going to... I'm inclined to agree with Clara. <laughs> She's going to smile the slightest bit. It, it's kind of like she's holding back a giggle. Um, and she's going to go, do you? Uh... Put my hand over Jade's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. We've already had this discussion. Okay. That's probably for the best. I will only remove my hand if it seems like Jade's gonna relax and stop. If she's not, if she's not, it's staying where it is. She, uh, she will calm down. Um, uh, then I will slowly remove my hand. Sorry, uh, I'm just excited about stuff here. Um, uh -huh. when you say a burning. Have you, do you know about the dreams that's been happening around town? Or around yes. this place? Yes, I do. Many of my performers have also said they've had been having such strange dreams. I myself have been able to protect myself from them. And I believe that you know that they are something you need to protect yourself from, yes? No. They are not simply views into the subconscious of yourself. These are being brought on, broadcasted even, by a Fulton. A hmm. dreamwalker with nothing better to do than to meddle with mortals. Dangerous, truly, without uh, protections in place. Um, are, they connect so. are they connected to the people that took Gwendolyn, do you think? I do not think so. Those were more physical men. The Fulton has little need for anything physical anymore. Interesting. Question, um, Solomon. Yes. When we wake up, do we still remember the name Gentle Father and Weeping Mother, or is that only when we're asleep? You do. You do remember it. It is the actual details of of like who you see with those names are vague, but you remember the names themselves. Okay. So then Jade's going to think about what she said and then kind of, maybe a little bit more like herself, kind of quietly asked, do you know about the gentle father and the weeping mother, then? Those names have been said, yes, though I don't know who exactly they are meant to represent. I am just pinching the bridge of my nose. Has Gwendolyn mentioned them? No, actually. No. Okay, so at least we know. Anyhow, you said... You said you saw her getting taken, right? Yes, the very tail end of the rather sordid affair. Did you recognize any of the people or anything you can say that we could possibly remember? Unfortunately, no, I d did not recognize them, though I do believe that the car was speeding off in the direction of the catacombs of Komel Shakofa. Which interests me, as most people who are in the know are the ones who would go there hoping to find the Serapeum. What's that? <laughs> it is a little hideaway. A hidden place of knowledge beyond science and normal philosophies. 
Dade's eyes are so wide. It's a place that it seems we'd probably stay away from. A place where there? some might stay away from, but others might go to hide something or someone. Have you been there yourself? Once or twice. I know the uh, proprietor of it, the director of it. She does not often permit unwelcome visitors, the but those in the know know the way. And if you know the way, then you are a welcome visitor. I don't suppose you could enlighten us. Please. Hmm. I'm looking at Jade like I'm probably going to try and find a way to not bring this vlog because I die, but... Margaret, if you could, please give me an allure check. I will happily do the thing that I'm good at. Um... Sixty-eight. I have an eighty in a lore, so... She gives you a bright smile. I suppose I could give you a gentle hint. It would be much appreciated. Perhaps you have noticed that a few of the men and women here use perfumes and oils scented with the jasmine that can be found here. Mm -hmm. Follow that scent. Thank you. Of course. Could I interest you in staying for the show? We are going to be putting on a rather, well, many critics would say a sordid affair, but I think it is of great artistic need in this city. We are going to be performing the Golden Age, a more modern reimagining of the Greek myth of Cronus. What time is the show? Oh, it will be about 9 p.m. We wanted everyone who would use the excuse, oh, it is too late to not come. We want those who want to be there to truly make an effort. Well, we do have plans for the evening, but if we can make it, we'll do our best. Of course. Thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, any time. Uh, just to clarify, what time is it now? Uh, it's, it's running the middle of the day. Yeah, it's running maybe about like 3 p.m., 4 p.m. around there. Right, okay. Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, merci, uh, Madame Eugenie. And uh, I would definitely think on your offer to perform here. It looks like an uh, intriguing establishment you have created here. I like to think so. And I think you'd get along just fantastically with our uh, other dancers. I have one question that I want to ask, but I feel like it's going to come back and bite me in the ass. Do it, do it. Madam Eugenie, have you ever heard the term Alucite? Oh, you are dancing with very dangerous people, my friend. But from one traveling stray cat to another, you are safe under my roof. And she gives you a bright and rather knowing smile. Well, what are they? I am steering Jade away. Come Jade along, Jade. We have, we, have places, by... we have places to be. <laughs> as quickly as I can. <laughs> Absolutely fair. She seemed entirely too eager for that answer. <laughs> oh... Eugenie gives a gentle little wave. Have fun, my dears. And with that, we will go ahead and go back to Aurora Roberts, who has managed to find a decent little oh. occult shop. Um, in the spirit of keeping the team together, um, she was at the. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Well then, 
What is everyone's next plan? I mean, for, for my part, I'm just trying to get Jade away from the people who know things that could make this whole manic episode of hers worse. <laughs> Fair um, enough. I, uh, Margaret doesn't look super, like, eager to be away from the theater. Like, it seems like this is than other places, but she's also like, mm, poor girl's already half out of her mind. We should be careful. That's fair. Do you think Mr. Bruno could drive us to this uh, spear, Sarah, to this place that Madame <laughs> Eugenia told us about? I'm actually getting a look at the map. Um, is there like a... Yeah, it's number two. On the edge of the Arab graveyard. Well, kind of. Yeah, I'm assuming it's that, that whole circle. It's like, yeah, maybe much. it's, it's just like it's somewhere in here. Yeah. Well, I, I was looking for a place that, that smells like jasmine, um, actually, because it might make it might make it easier to find it. Um, are there is there a place that I can find that has any sort of um, jasmine gardens or or shops that would sell while that would sell jasmine, that sort of thing? Uh, most of the flower uh boutiques around here so sell them as do any most places where you get perf perfume why uh egyptian white jasmine is very popular mm. i was gonna say we go to the uh number two area like we go into the uh, circled area first and then we find uh, any jasmine inside the circle so uh it narrows us down yeah she did say it was heading towards the tombs so we could head towards the catacombs, and then start, I guess, sniffing. <laughs> Quite literally sniffing around. Mm-hmm. And I guess we'll do that. You've so been heading... reduced to bloodhounds. <laughs> I would like everyone to please go ahead and give me... We'll call it intelligence, but unfortunately, given that it's just based off of scent and there's a large area, uh, if you're just, if you're not track. going to, uh, I will do track or intelligence at, uh, I'll do intelligence at two disadvantages, so at a minus 20 or just track. Um, can we just choose not to roll? You can indeed choose not to roll. Then I will choose not to roll because there's no way I'm going to beat that. Ah, oh, what's the worst that could happen? So many things. So many things. Wait, two disadvantages. Oh, so that puts me back to my normal. Nope, I failed. <laughs> We've all failed. Did anyone nope. succeed? Anyone at all? Nope. Unfortunately, it seems like uh, just going to off of your nose and trying to find places where it, uh, with such a large area, it seems like it, this place is eluding you for the evening and it is getting closer to dusk. It's getting closer to about 5 p.m. going on 5.30. We have to get to the dock. Yes, we, have we must be to the harbor. Yes. Wait. Isn't the harbor where the lighthouse is? <laughs> there is a lighthouse at the harbor, but it's not where there the... Is uh, a lighthouse, it's not but the not, lighthouse. Not the lighthouse. Okay, of okay. No. I was very concerned. I was like, wait, <laughs> hold on. We have a crazy person no, with us. No, the lighthouse <laughs> is where we're going tomorrow. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll go to the harbor then. So headed over to the harbor, uh, you are brought over to the harbor where the scent of the sea is very intense and f just fills your nostrils. Uh, you can see that there are steamships and even a few small uh, sailing ships. And you see sailors and dockers and customs men 
uh, drunkards and lovers just walking around the place. And you can just see a beautiful view of the bay from the Cape of Figs and the King's official uh, residence, the Rossel Tin Palace. Some um, people are yeah. grilling fish, and some people are burning kerosene uh, lamps at the moment to keep everything to to bring some light where the sun is leaving them. Uh, can we see any of the boats that were listed in the uh, telegram? Telegraph? Yes. Okay. You can see that there is one ship that is the, from the telegraph. There is the Daedalus, which is a light ship which is a ship that actually has a uh, smaller lighthouse built onto it. I'm just going to frown and nudge Clara and nod at it. On the ship, you can see about seven sailors on board that are currently just busy working. And the lantern of the light ship itself is wrapped in a thick covering of some sort tied with rather expensive looking rope. But you can see that there is a uh, strange golden haze that leaks through the canvas. Oh. One. What? Uh, I don't like this one bit. Me mm. either. Well, sure. Did you wait? You cut out really bad, honey. Yeah, you keep cutting out. Yeah, I'm messing with sensitivity right now. Better. There we go. Yes. Well, shall we go see what all the commotion's about? I mean, do you see the um? Do you see the light on that on that boat? Oh, yes, there's there's definitely something off about it. I'm not sure that we should get Jade anywhere near it. I imagine we probably shouldn't get Jade very near quite a lot of things around here. Jade, Aurora, and Francois. Mm -hmm. You all hear a deep American-accented voice saying, Hey, kid. And Aurora, you recognize that voice as the one that assaulted your mind. Um. I, I immediately turn to see who it is. There is no one there. It was just a, at like the edge of your ear, but when you turn, you are only with the others. And the same goes for uh, Jade and Francois. Mm. Francois, I was going to say out loud, did any of you hear that? You heard it too. This is that was it the was. voice in my that was the voice in my mind earlier. I I I. I I, um, mm. I, um, yeah, um, nothing. What, what did the voice sound like? Describe it for me. It was heavy and American and, um, you're saying take it. Take it. Last time I heard that voice, it, it told me that I shouldn't be in the area that I was in, and that's when I got my headache. Wait a minute. Did it have a twang? Did it have a twang? Uh, not like a southern twang. It sounded a more uh, eastern, like someone from one of the bigger cities, like perhaps from what little you know of of American accents, Chicago or New York. It didn't sound like our cowboyish friend. No, it sounded like it came from hmm, like a uh, New York City or, or 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 one of those bigger areas. Miss mm. Miss Roberts. Yes. You said when you encountered this, whoever, whatever it was, you you saw something in your mind earlier today. Hmm. Yes. What exactly did you see? 
It was the face. Face Anything? of a man. Um, were there any distinguishing features to this face? Uh, like a sort of dramatic handsomeness with a really uh, chiseled jaw, but also uh, bright golden eyes. I was the first thing that came to my mind was handsome Squidward. What the? Glowing <laughs> 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 eyes. That's not anything anybody wants. It was an extremely handsome, chiseled face with um, very defined features, glowing eyes. Um, uh, something that felt in he, in his presence, it felt so cold. Wait, hold on. Glowing eyes. Glowing eyes. Glowing what color? Like a like a golden? Like golden, yes. Motherfucker. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to go out on a limb and say I think we found a ship. And I don't think we should bring Jade anywhere near it. Okay. Um, you seem to understand to some degree what's going on. Oh, would you mind explaining? My guess is that whatever this what's it been referred to a fulgent I believe that's been causing all these dreams uh, well it at least it would explain why when they can hear a thing they can't physically see it but Aurora can or could see it in her mind and I think I think whatever's hidden under that cloth well let's just say I don't think we should let it stay there for much longer I think we need to either try and push it out or something to get rid of it something is something's not right here that's all I know there's an awful lot of things that aren't right how do we deal with it without potentially risking Jade getting too exposed that's unfortunately the problem that I haven't quite gotten out of myself I mean if I had a rifle perhaps but I don't um I can stay back here and mm. not and not go near it. I, I I won't move anywhere. I'll just stay right going, here. This is going to be an odd request. Does anybody have any way to blindfold Miss Warner? Oh. Um I will kind of like reach into my little purse and I will pull out like like fucking elbow length gloves that I'm just not wearing because it's hot. could always turn one of these into a blindfold. If it's long enough, it should tie just fine. That could work. Um, you could also just take my glasses off. I have pretty bad eyesight. Mm. I, I don't think... Or both! I think, it's, I think it's less the physical act of seeing it and more the metaphorical act of seeing it, if that makes sense. Mm, not to me, but... And I'll look over at Aurora. You seem to understand these things. I do. Well, you know how to see things, apparently, that others can't. Do you know how to make it so that others can't see things that they shouldn't? Aurora, there is a way. It is a rather brief ritual that would sort of null the senses to anything around you. It mm -hmm. would... Take it, to, well, it would only take but a moment, but doing so would protect you and others. The only thing is that it would also just generally dull everything sense of taste, touch, smell, hearing. The only it would just you would be left uh, a bit 
dulled to all senses for a few hours at least. I do have one thing that I know how to do. Um, it's a ritual. I can dull the senses of all of us so nobody's at risk to... And then she looks back to Jade and then looks back to um, to Margaret. Um, it leaves your senses completely dulled, though. Um, your sense of taste wouldn't be that great. Your sense of smell, sight, hearing. Everything is dulled, but it's... Would you have to do it to all of us? Can I get away with just doing it to Jade or do I have to do it to um, to myself and Jade? You can I mean, do I'm... it to several people. It would just require everyone to be willing to give in to the ritual, which would require uh, either a sacrifice of hair or a to be willing to be wounded in the sole of the feet. So we could do it to just Jade. Yes, Jade. Yes, yes you could do it to just Jade. Okay. That's that's what oh. I was hoping for. Oh. All right, girl. Come over here. We're going to get started. Mm. Hmm. Get over here right now. <laughs> I, promise, I promise that what we're going to do is for your own good, as well as the good of likely everyone around. And I can assure you what I'm going to do is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Do I want it to happen? <laughs> Yeah. Um. If this, if I do this, can I go on the ship? And can we go to the lighthouse still? Well, we don't know that we're going to the lighthouse, but you can come onto the ship if you. If not, you'll be going back to the hotel with someone to watch out for you to make sure that you don't go running off and doing something reckless. All right. She'll give in. All right, Aurora, I need a night arts roll, but you will be doing this with advantage because it is getting to night and dusk oh. is a time of power. Perfect. All right. Um, cool. Twenty nine. Um, I kind of want to. Um, I want to take a D four from. The moth, because uh, I again um, difficulty with the lore, but I I think that the moth is a time of chaos. Yes, it's also and, it was also mentioned earlier that this specific ritual is tied intricately with the moth. So perfect. Yes. So yeah, I'm gonna I want to reroll that nine and see if I can get I want to see if I can get doubles. <laughs> Fair enough. Go right ahead. Nope. 23. Ah. No. Oh. So close. So, with reaching out and taking a bit of hair from uh, Miss Warner, just a small amount, you're able to blow it away across her and each strand seems to almost go against one of her senses uh, each one just seeming to sort of caress them and numb them her sight her, her hearing touch and even the sense of longing she has is dulled Jade please remove one level of fascination happy That should do the trick. Um, her sense, her vision will be slightly clouded. Her hearing will be slightly blocked. She can't taste much. She can't really feel much on her fingers. Um, now watch, watch. Jade, can you hear me? And she's saying that in a low, low whisper. Like, Jade, you can't, you can't hear shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, Jade is like rubbing her fingers together it's like huh this is weird well that is handy I 
I am. I'm quite practiced in, um, dulling the senses. Don't no. worry about it, darling. <laughs> it's okay. That's a little just loud for Jay. The same thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little loud for Jay, but it, it, it comes in clearer. So, one hundred percent going to do this. Like I got two syllables in, and you were already on it. I was just okay. <laughs> That was hilarious. Ah, uh, well. Hopefully, that will help keep her stay mm. sane. We'll keep her from getting any less stable. Would I know that this can dull like your mental, like your mentality? Like. Have I done this ritual enough times to know that I, it could have the potential to like dull the mentality a little bit? Yes, you've done enough to like you've seen to tur turn someone who's like an avid supporter of, of something or like someone who was a uh, almost fanatical, just dulled it enough, at least for a short time to where you could uh, handle them. Like if what? someone was trying for something uh, very personal for you, you'd use that and they would uh, calm down. I do know that that ritual has the ability to dull any bouts of m manic behavior. Um, oh, good. Yes, so that that is one of the uh, another reason why I think that it might be good if we do it. Um, I would like to avoid having to stab the souls of her feet, though. So let's make sure that we don't take all of her hair. I shouldn't have to take any more, should you? You already did it. It's not a forever spell. It's temporary. And if we have to go and do things that might be a bit out of the ordinary. Right. So what you're saying is we should move quickly. Yes. All right. Then let's go. Um, Solomon, how do we get on to the Daedalus? Can we tell? Is it, like, at a dock, or do we have to get, like, a dinghy to take us out to it? It is you docked, and there and is jump. a gangplank. You perfect. run and jump. <laughs> yes. Um, perfect. Uh, I guess we're headed that way? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> you are all able to head that way, no real problem at all. Uh... <laughs> As you get closer, you see that uh, first one sailor looks over to you and then just goes back to working. And then as you get closer to the gangplank, three more little look almost in tandem. And then as you actually step to the gang gangplank, all seven of the sailors you see just stop what they're doing and turn to look at you. Like at the exact same moment. Oh, that's unsettling. Um... And can I? I oh. Sorry, you can go. <laughs> I was going to ask if I can, like, turn on the charm um, and kind of, like, sweet talk or smooth talk my way uh, on lots of, like, you know, kind of misdirection and just overpowering personality that I'm rich and I get what I want kind of kind of thing. Give me an allure roll. Uh, Miss Roberts, what were you thinking? I want to vibe check this place. I want to see if there's anything. I want to tap into my, um, into my ever, my ever uh, here presence and see <laughs> if there is, uh, if there is anything kind of, you know, lurking in the air. <laughs> I just rolled an 11. Nice. My allure is an 80. Nice. Uh, very nice. Miss Roberts, please give me a roll of I will say bright arts for this. Okay. That's just as high. 40. I succeed. <laughs> you can tell that uh the light up above that golden light surrounded by canvas is influencing these these sailors. Not controlling, not like directly puppeting 
but influencing. It's a little more subtle. They still are themselves, but they also still also feel a hand on their shoulder, a voice in their ear. Before Margaret begins to talk, I'm just going to lean into her and say, The light holds something over these people. You can, I can see it, um, almost like a, um, an invisible hand on their shoulder, that, that, that look of the intensity in their eye. Um, whatever this is, and she's gonna gesture up, has hold over the gentleman. Hmm. Looks like someone will have to counteract that. Hmm. Um, and I am turning on like the thousand watt smile and the big personality and the person who has like, you know, rubbed shoulders with aristocracy and and, you know, gone slumming and the whole nine and can kind of fit in anywhere and be the life of the party anyway. Absolutely. And as you turn that on, uh, the sailors are looking at you but they seem more amenable they are all now bright smiles and and just greeting you saying i oh, welcome of course aboard. i belong Playlist. here <laughs> you absolutely uh, belong here you've probably uh partied with sailors before mm-hmm. uh they are all turning on the charm and largely focused on you uh anyone who wants to move past them can fairly easily do so there is yeah. a uh Away up towards closer to the uh, actual lantern of the light ship. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, oh, sorry. I'm I was sorry. Just gonna, I was gonna give Clara a very meaningful glance, um, kind of a go. This is your chance. Go break some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to. <laughs> this might come back and bite me in the ass. Um, I want to go towards the light. God damn it! I mean, that's oh, where man. Clara's going. Yeah. So, that... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think everybody but me is going that way. Um, and maybe Jade. Jade can hang out with me if she wants to. <laughs> well, more so, I, I I, mean, I'm not going there with the intent of breaking it. I am going there with the intent of almost... I'm almost, like, following, like, that glow that, like, that had the sailors um, not enamored but influence um i want to find i want to see if we can try to like i want to see if i can kind of try to begin to track down that source of light okay francois what are you doing i'm just gonna follow behind uh clara and uh aurora uh staying a few steps behind them just in case fair enough and jade are you going to be sticking with uh margaret or are you going to uh, with your deadened senses, head closer to the lantern. Mm. I think she's going to head with the others towards the lantern. But she's kind of like clinging a little bit to Francois because she's like, I think she's like, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like when you wake up from sleep, but you're kind of like, you don't know what time it is. So she's just kind of like, oh, everything's kind of in a haze. Yeah, muted and in a haze. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, first of all, we'll uh, walk a bit slower just to make sure uh, Jade's keeping up. Gotcha. So Clara and Aurora and everyone else heading towards the lantern. You all feel a hand on your shoulder and a wh- and you all hear, what are you doing on my ship, kids? We, I didn't ask for you to come here. You don't have to come here. Hell, you don't even gotta stay in, the, in Alexandria. You want, we can just take you away to wherever else you want to go, and you can leave me in mind to handle things. You can leave me alone, respectfully. Been I can, but you <laughs> keep coming to work. To my parties. Hmm. I'm gonna keep following that light. <laughs> I... And what is everyone else's reaction? Um, 
Jade's gonna... Do I kind of hear him muffled, or is it just not affecting me as much? Uh, you hear him as as openly as the others do, but it's mm-hmm. not affecting you as much. It's like it's like he's talking to a wall, but it's it's on you're on the other side of that wall. Gotcha. Okay, so then I'll kind of be like, "Hi, hello, excuse me. Um, are you the gentle father?" Well. I've been called a few things in my time. Fathers, sure, I am a father. That's why I came here. To be with my lady and our little girl. Gentle. Gentle don't really usually come with it, but I can usually swing it. Oh, this bitch gotta die. (laughs) Oh. I'm. Problem is, I don't know how to stab something that doesn't have a corporeal form. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, okay. Um, Creatively? Interesting. Let me get the ghost clock. Let me get the ghost clock. (laughs) Um, are you, do you know, uh, Audrey? Ah, Audrey. I may be a being made of light, but she is my life. That's, that's my woman you're talking about. Oh, you know I heard great things about her actually. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep going now. <laughs> and Jade's gonna keep following. <laughs> okay, let me be a little bit clearer. Get the fuck off my boat. Oh, honey. And this is uh, so loud and s- with such intensity. Even Margaret hears it. I am glancing at the others, but not. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm just sort of waiting for the sign that I need to shoot the fucking lantern. Fair enough. I've been ordered around by a lot of people. You don't fucking scare me. Do you know who you're talking to? You don't disobey Everett fucking Lapidoth. Sorry, so far as I'm concerned, you're a lantern. You don't exist. Your funeral meat puppet. And then the sailors all just, like, seize up a little bit and look like they are in immense amounts of pain. Uh... I'm assuming I noticed that. Do I hear the your funeral part? You do. Uh, can I draw the gun and shoot the fucking lantern? Absolutely. <laughs> Give me a shooting yeah. roll, please. <laughs> Margaret's not fucking around with this. She's like, all right, I gave you guys a chance to get to it physically. If that's going to work, I will shoot it. You all were getting rather close, but then uh, that. <laughs> uh, I have to beat an 80, I think. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Bang, bang. Do... 70. Very well done. The shot tears through the canvas that is wrapped around the lantern, and you hear this sort of intense distortion in your head, kind of like there was uh, the sound of wind chimes that just abruptly stopped and started going backward. Mm. That, That ain't very fucking nice. And light's still on, huh? Takes more what? than that to dim me, and there is a intense pulse of light. I need everyone to roll me determination. Jade, you will roll this at flat. Your fascinate the ritual has numbed your fascination's effect on your determination. Copy. Oh Jesus! Clara and Margaret are having none of it. <laughs> It's like, man, I really hate this guy. Oh, that <laughs> hatred overpowers his esoteric <laughs> bullshit. I failed. Again. Uh, I failed as well. I'm going to call on the uh, Red Grails uh, D4. Okay. Uh, is anyone else calling on any other powers here? Yeah, I gotta look at them. I'm really considering doing it just to see if I can manage a 
double, but I also don't want to take d4s because people need them. Now, what you should really do is you should aim for the one. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I rerolled and cleared. Okay. Uh, Aurora, are you going to reroll? Hmm. And uh, what die did you use, and from what, uh, Francois? Red Grail. Uh, D4 from the Red Grail? Yes. Copy. I believe there's uh, three of them left, I think. And now there are two. Hmm. Hmm. I, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-roll. I gotta look at me. Hold on. Um... Um, I'm gonna roll um, a D. A, I'll go D six. Um, it's from our. I'm gonna go D. I'll, I'll go D six from um, also from um, the the red girl. Okie dokie. What's on the light and stuff right now? A D8 and three D12s. Yikes. Okay. Oh, there we go. Very nice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use the D8 from the Lion Smith, pulling Ooh. on how bright everything is there. Because I'm trying to fight, I guess, against this brightness that's Fair being blasted at us. All right. Go ahead and roll it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Um. Yay! I passed. Thirty-four. Very nicely done. First time I ever passed determination. I mean, it's a good thing considering. Yeah. Indeed. And now, uh, the s sailors seem to be uh, slowly rising back up, but they are gone is that look of like joy and happiness and having a good time. And now there is a sort of grim determination uh, on their face. Almost it's blank, but there is a focus. Kara? Uh, well, I'm not exactly sure how well I can stab light, but let's see what I can do. How about these guys? <laughs> I, I, I can... You guys worry about the men, I can take care of the lantern. That's that I'm much more comfortable doing. Clara, if you're going to be attacking these men, I would like you to please roll me uh, knife fighting. I was about to take these guys to Waffle House. Normally there would be some disadvantage for fighting a group by yourself. But you have trained for this. You have been trained for this. You know the deadliness of the edge. That, that, that's a success. <laughs> that is very much a success. You are moving in and just throwing yourself at them and you are without equal when it comes to a knife you are able to use it to deter attacks and to are you going for lethality or are you trying to just focus on attacking them and trying to convince them it's a bad idea to keep fighting uh I'll, st I'll start no uh lethality okay <laughs> <laughs> Please describe to me. Uh, what is your knife fighting level at again? Uh, 80. Please describe to me how you kill four of the seven people here. Christ. Oh, how do, how do I want to do this? <laughs> um. <laughs> I like to imagine it's weirdly casual all things considered um 
as Clara essentially like taking advantage of the moment of like them having whatever the fuck happens and them standing up, like taking that time to close the, the distance and get in between a bunch of them. And then just casually slitting the throats of two of them. And then uh, going for like, like roughly aiming for the heart uh, with a stab on the other two. Fair enough. Francois, what are you up to? Since he's uh, towards the uh, back of the group, should anyone slip past Clara, uh, Francois is going to push him back to Clara. Fair enough. So you, we will say that you are aiding Clara for the time being. Uh, it, well, only if he needs it. If not, uh, he's going to stand there and look pretty. Fair enough. Uh, as others are getting closer to the lantern, those that are not immediately dropped by Clara are getting to begin to move that way. So if you could go ahead and give me a physique roll to act as a uh, as a bouncer almost to just push them back into the fight. Understood. And while you're doing that, Jade and Aurora, what are you two up to? Jade is just following Aurora as much as she can to try to help live destroying I guess this lantern although it feels kind of weird for her but she stills like yeah I guess we gotta destroy this thing <laughs> we are going to destroy a lamp <laughs> I love lamp I love lamp I love lamp <laughs> lamp oh my uh, God. so Francois just, call, just call us a bunch of moths yeah, Wait, uh, hold on. I failed, but uh, I'm going to use a D8 from Red Grail to uh, Real. Okay. And I've cleared. Okay, so you're able to, not with intense uh, strength, but a decent bit of strength and a, di and a good bit of like maneuvering around them using your uh, dancing steps to just sort of like maneuver them and guide them back into the fight with Clara with a with a intense grace. A dance of death, you can say. Dance of death, as one could definitely say. And Jade and Aurora, what power would you two like to call on to try to tell this lantern to go the hell away? Would you try, like to try uh -huh. to fight fire with fire with bright arts or try to use a more corporeal and deadening sense from the night arts. Oh, yeah. I want to call on the gift of night and well. dim dim the candle, uh, as one would call it. Jade, are you going to be assisting her? Yes. I was going to call upon the bright to, to try to... You know when you give light too much power, it, it blows up? Um... Too, shines too bright, burns out fast. Mm -hmm. Or thing, or you could tell when a lamp is going to go out because it shines brighter than the rest. So, I think a balance of kind of pulling it in both opposite directions of filling it with too much, but also pulling away a lot. Like maybe <laughs> we're just messing with them, throwing them out of whack. Also, Please, both. Hmm? You we're saying. Oh, I was going to say also. If maybe I can also use the lantern that's on my sheet to maybe help. <laughs> yes, with the knowledge, your own knowledge of the lantern, while this being is made up oh. of that light, you know just how to siphon out yeah. enough of it to give an opening for Cla <laughs> for Aurora. I, I also have lantern knowledge. <laughs> and with that knowledge, you were able to aid her to get... You also so have we, winter, don't you? I do, yes. You know enough to aid her to siphon off that light elsewhere and how to instill that intense heat from the lantern with a chill. Please give me night arts with advantage, Aurora. Jade, please give me bright arts with two advantages. I would like to re-roll that six with the d4 using moth. 
Okay. The moth, is, the moth's wings flutter in your mind, and perhaps out into the world. Uh, that is a 22. Oh, yeah. Yes! <laughs> okay. And well, let's see what Jade got. I got 36. Still pass. Indeed. You, Jade, it is like you push away whatever defenses that were here. You bring your hand up and pull away the canvas and the light while it tries to burn you with how intense it is you are able to fight it off as it just almost goes like from that gold into an intense white and Aurora pulls up her hand and a it seems to start to crack into the into the design of a snowflake and the and a bit of darkness and blood seeps out of it and pressing it to the lantern shatters it and everything goes white for everyone as you all hear Everett's just intense scream of pain everything goes white and time passes until you all wake back up again, uh, being pulled out uh, of the water and onto the dock by the remaining sailors from the Daedalus, as you see the Daedalus itself uh, sail off and all looks like it's try it's sinking into the waves. Dusk has come and gone. It is now night. It is about nine and in the evening, you'd have to imagine. But how full it is. The hell happened. We killed it. Whatever it was. Oh. Aurora. You hear in the back of your mind, you ain't here at the last uh, effort. <laughs> that the tough. Yeah, let's cough some more in my ear, darling. That's exactly what I love. There is no response. That's what I thought. I wouldn't necessarily say that we killed it, though. Can you really kill something like that? We took away some of its power. That's the closest thing to killing you can get to. That. Jade? Mm hmm. How are you feeling? Um. Jade? Yeah. Please remove the first level of fascination as well. As it seems to have not only been removed from you, it seems to have just burned away. The, uh, the power of the uh, uh, ritual is also burned away. It seems as your senses come back to you, everything's a little louder, a little brighter. The scent of the ocean is a little saltier. Jade is gonna like keep laying on the ground or wherever they left her and just like rub her face and kind of be like, I think I need a drink. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah, it'll make at least three of us. Excellent. Um, One of the sailors just says, uh, could, I think you could make that six. We don't have a ship anymore. And what the fuck happened? And he just looks to his buddies and they're just like, I don't fucking know. We were talking to you. And then we were swimming. And then now here we are. Mm, so I don't remember much of the stuff in between either, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm well, so glad they don't remember what happened. Yeah, well, what could that possibly be? Hmm? Well, a bit of a blur to me. But, because you saved our lives and fished us out of the water, I will buy you a drink. Hey, thanks. Uh, as you all head off to the street, you see that there are several uh, 
motor carriages, even uh, what looks to be the fire department uh, rolling about, rolling by. And there are even uh, a few uh, police buggies rolling by as well. And you see Captain Khalil is uh, actually running, is actually moving on foot in the same direction as everything else. I like to preferably steer people out of the way um, so that we don't necessarily run directly into the authorities. If I uh, briefly consider uh, just breaking off into a sprint. <laughs> mm, don't sprint. Always look like you are meant to be where you were supposed to be. Just casually turn a, t- turn a corner. Uh, I'm going to roll for Captain Khalil secretly. <laughs> Margaret has spent half of her life sneaking into the places she probably wasn't meant to be because she was always going to the parties that she wasn't meant to be at, so... Yeah, that's fair. Are you trying to hide yourself from Captain Khalil? Um... I'm trying to kind of make it, like, so that we're part of the scenery. Yeah, we're we're trying to Assassin's Creed blend into the crowd type thing. Fair enough. Um, it's, It's less hiding, more nothing to see here. Fair enough. Uh, if you're trying to make it so that Khalil doesn't see you at all and doesn't even notice you, please roll blending. I believe that is a skill on your sheet. Uh, yes, yes, I have no nothing in blending. So not uh, bamboozle. Not bamboozle. Sorry. I can try blending. <laughs> and if you don't have blending, I will uh, accept. Uh, I believe it's dexterity or agility. Yeah, dexterity. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Ooh, nice. 69. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going to reroll the 69 because it doesn't clear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Margaret? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I typoed. Oh, it's a D. Oh, D. Oh. Oh. Well, apparently Margaret is fine. Margaret has ta- has decided to become incorporeal for a moment. <laughs> Mar- <laughs> huh, Margaret is now also made of light. <laughs> no shadows. It's dark. What? 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 <laughs> 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 so, uh, for those, Margaret rolled a one. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Yes. Margaret's rolled weirdly well tonight. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so, Jade, you unfortunately <laughs> are not are not so stealthy. Francois stuck with that sixty nine. Uh, Captain Khalil comes up <laughs> towards you, nice. uh, seeming to ignore everyone else because he knows Jade. Because I believe it was, I believe Jade went with Margaret. Speaking mm-hmm. yes yes so he's like oh uh madam are you all right um yeah i'm okay i a little clumsy and i dropped my glasses into the water and i tried to grab it and i end up falling into so oh, it's a little embarrassing to be honest oh that, that is perfectly fine i it happens to the best of us i'm just glad to see that you are here the Faruka state, it, 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 it has fallen. It seems the earth itself opened and took it from us. What? See for yourself, and he will uh, just hail a uh, buggy to let himself and anyone who else wants to, who wants to go with him. He's like, come with me. There might be, we might be able to salvage something. She's gonna look to the group, kind of like with tired eyes, like, I don't... <laughs> I'll go. Get trapped. <laughs> mm. Um, is, um, is this the type of buggy where we can, like, hang off the back? Yes. Right, then well, I, I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into that. I rolled a one, I can pull this off, it's fine. <laughs> you absolutely can, because God is winking. <laughs> Are God's doing what now? God That's is winking. That's what it means when you're God, 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 God is what? <laughs> God, this is a PG-13 movie. You're, you're, you're in the wrong age gap. A winker. So as you all get back onto 
as who are, whoever is going gets onto the buggy, uh, you all are able to head over to the to Maharam Bay, where the uh, estate of the Farouks is. And you see that Loretta has let Loretta's house has been reduced to rubble. There are a few support beams that lead hideously out of shards of stone and glass, and everything else is just basically gone. Including the uh, lion statue, which seems, to have, which seems to have cracked in half. Can we see what Jade. that thing in its mouth? You can see the thing that was in the lion statue's mouth, and you are able to go over and get it. Uh, Jade's gonna go grab it. It is a small glass vial from within the mountain. The liquid itself inside of it looks clearer than water. It looks almost like it's liquid crystal instead of being water. Hmm. She's gonna look at this and then pocket it for the moment, because she's like, we, I could talk about this with the group later, when we're not amongst authorities. <laughs> Normies. Damn, I Normie. take advantage of my super sneaky stealth and kind of have a look around, see if there's anything else that uh, we might be able to see. Fine. Absolutely. Uh, I will say you don't even have to roll. You do find something. Uh, this is where I finally get a level of fascination. Watch. <laughs> or Dread. Or Dread. Honestly, Dread's much more on brand. Uh, is that this manganese? Yep, manganese. Oh no, I don't like that. I don't even have to scroll down to know what card and, this is. Oh no, that, oh. What is it, what is it? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could show these for the people at home, but I'm pretty sure they're copywritten. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, so for those at home, um, we have just been given a document that all it is is a PDF of the tower, the tarot card, mm -hmm. which is uh, bad news. Yeah, the tower is always bad. You know what's a tower? Or something like a tower? <laughs> Jade? No. No. <laughs> the lighthouse. Jade doesn't know that we have this yet. Hush. <laughs> it um, is true. I, I will... Is Aurora with us or is it just me? No, Aurora won. Okay. Yeah, I, think, I, I think assume we all, we all did. Okay, I just... I'm just asking. I didn't want to assume. Um, I will uh, make my way over to Aurora... Um, all Heidi Heidi and slip the card into her hand. Like from behind. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna grab it and just kind of look down at it. This seems like a very Aurora thing. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Aurora, as you look at it, you hear. <laughs> oh, she's shut up. <laughs> <sighs> can I vibe check this card? <laughs> Absolutely, you can vibe check that card. <laughs> All right, hey GI, vibe check. <laughs> what do you want me to roll? Uh, I don't know. We'll go ahead and say it is either intelligence or widely read, or you can roll bright arts. Oh, um, super, could I, also, could I roll widely check. read? Yes. I'll roll bright arts. Okie dokie. I pass. Uh, I do not. Uh, oh, God. Uh, um, I'm going to burn a die, though, to make that not that. Um, okay. Anything but that, thanks. Um, I will burn a... 
I would like to use uh, the D one of the D6s off of the moth because, quite frankly, the last several days have felt like chaos to, Mar to Margaret. That's and she's her. just yeah. desperately trying to piece things together and understand what's going on. By all means, go right ahead. Hell yes. It's a 19, so I pass. <laughs> so... I went from a 99 to a 19. As... As someone who has probably just dabbled a little, like, playfully into basic uh, uh, esoteric things, just no more knowing from, like, books and such, as opposed to actually having interacted with himself, you know that this is a tarot card of the tower. And you know exactly what that means. Oh, dear. Aurora, you know that this is a tarot card of the tower, but you also know that, th that this is a calling card left by that motherfucker. That motherfucker. Well, oh, shit. We should get out of here. I have a sneaking suspicion we should go to the theater. We can't really run off in front of the detective, but we can quietly make our way elsewhere. Give them, give them an Irish goodbye. Yes. Uh, Captain Khalil does come up and says, "Do would any of you like uh, an escort back to uh, the hotel you are staying at? We can ensure that you will be so seen after that no one will harm you." Honestly, you seem to have your hands rather thing in work. Rather, I think we'll be all right on our own. Um, I do appreciate the offer, though. Of course. Uh, please, have a safe rest of the evening. You as well. As we're walking away, once we get out of earshot from Captain Kirk or whatever his name is, um, <clears throat> Aurora's just gonna speak in a low tone. Well, <laughs> it seems that our little friend isn't quite done with us. Power. Calling card. The tower? He's still in my head, you know. Can you lock him out? Not easily. Do you at least try telling him to fuck off? Uh, yes, he does fuck off whenever I tell him to fuck off. Or he Even like that tend to, yes. No, well, fuck off as. Mm, if, I guess he 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 stops talking. I don't know if he will ever fully leave. As also, long I as like, a, hmm? uh, uh, since Margaret didn't hear this, um, this man seems to be the father of. Miss Gwendolyn Farouk. I hate family drama. Yes. Um, the baby daddy is getting involved. Hmm. Do you think perhaps he's some sort of source of where the mother's particular state came from? Mm. Wait a minute. Maybe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Um, in the book I was reading when I, uh, I mean, I was a bit excited about it. Um, More than a bit. Uh, I don't really understand what was happening there, but... Um, I did piece together that it seems like maybe, well, first off, there's definitely a relationship with eating, and we saw that there was eating of children happening, um, and we saw that oh. now the father, the mother, and now the child is missing, so I think they might be... Oh, yeah, God. Trying, yeah. Um, which makes me think... think they're going to... 
I guarantee that's exactly what they're going to do. It's a bit hard to tell. Um, It might be worth it for us to go check out maybe another library if there's one not in the university. Maybe a bookstore. That's why we should go continue talking to Madame Eugenie. Yeah, we we had such a hard time finding that place, even with her hint at me, behoove us to get it better into her graces and hope that she'll take us to where she'd be hidden. Well, I am a performer, though not in the same sense as her, but Twin Flames, I guess, and as well as Francois. Uh, yes, yes, that yeah, would be a good idea, and I believe we have time we can still make it to the theater. And I imagine we're safer there than we will be in our hotel, I'm going to be completely honest. Very much so, with the uh, crowd, with the uh, uh, attendees. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get amongst the people in the theater, and she's saying this while we're walking and quietly. Um, Clara, you did ask Madam Eugene about the Alucites. Do you think that Audrey is an Alucite? It's certainly not at the table. I part of the reason that I think we should go back there, because she did say that theater's safe from in. Okay. I imagine that if we weren't already on Miss Howard's watch list, and we certainly are now after we attempted to murder her partner? Husband? What if the fuck that man made of light was? I think it's her partner. I don't know. Something is something about this passage I was reading is starting to make this make a bit more sense to me, but I still I guess catching up with the rest of me. If what we really need to do is we need to find a way into that Serapeo. Which means we need to find it. Mm-hmm. And our friend at the theater knows how to get there. Yep. Precisely. Off we go to her then. Heading over to the theater, uh, Eugenie opens the door even before you're able to knock. She smiles and looks at all of you. Apologies. Go right ahead. I was going to ask if we could at least stop at the hotel and change clothes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Go right ahead. Okay. (laughs) Margaret's like, I'm not going to make an appearance looking like a drowned rat. Change uh, change your clothes into something not soaked in seawater. And blood. <laughs> and blood. Definitely not the blood. Um, uh, Aurora's gonna make it a, a personal, a personal thing to go and uh, and give um, uh, Mr. Lewis her 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 best wishes. <laughs> fair enough. Mm-hmm. He uh, seems to really appreciate it. Though now he's also a little on edge. <laughs> uh, as you arrive at the. Uh, theater she is all smiles and lets and ushers you in she takes you to the back rooms where uh her some of her guests who might have had a little bit too much to drink are able to stay the evening in comfort and in a rather cozy rather kind of blank room it's whereas the outside is all vibrant colors this is largely white and dull gray tones just it's rather jarring you may stay here as long as you like i find it easier to sleep in as few colors as possible i wish you all a good evening you look like you all could fall asleep at the drop of a hat Would anyone like something to drink to help love themselves? Please. Please. She leaves and comes back with a uh, bottle of gin and several glasses. Um. 
I would like to, uh, as people start to settle, um, do something. So, go right ahead. I would like to to go and 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 see if Eugene would like to just hang out and have more drinks with just me, um, and basically schmooze, um, make friends, so to speak. Fair enough. Give me an alert roll. Okay. I pass. Okay. She is a delight. She is wise beyond her years, but she's also experienced so much and experienced such things that would be considered so scandalous and gauche back home. But, but she speaks of them it was such delight and so much fun. My kind of person. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang out for the evening with her. <laughs> she smiles and says, I think that you would do well to meet up with a few of my friends back, back in London. She pulls out a small card that uh, has an address and says, when you go to this place, ask for Rhaenyra. She will help you have such wonderful times in London. Things that many of the, even the more scandalous clubs could not even think of. I will do that. That sounds like a wonderful time. Indeed. And I assume the rest of you are probably going to fall us to go to sleep after such an intense day. Uh, I yeah. would like to... Uh, before going to bed, I would like to cut a small lock of my hair and place it under my pillow. Okay. Is anyone else going to perform any any similar rituals? Yeah, Jade is going to take a quick moment to just jot down the notes from everything we did. Um, did Margaret ever give her back the book? Uh, I'm going to say that Margaret would have passed the book. She doesn't want anything to do with it, but she also doesn't necessarily <laughs> trust that Jade will go crazy when she has it again. So she's just like, I have to go schmooze and make nice with the. So gotcha. <laughs> you can deal with it if Jade wants to come get the book. <laughs> Copy. So who has it again? Sorry, I didn't hear Clara. That. Clara. OK. Um, I don't think she would bother Clara for it. So she's just going to jot down whatever notes she has in like one of her notebooks that she probably just shoved in her pocket after stopping at the hotel. She and then, did watch Clara murder four people in like three seconds earlier today. <laughs> yeah, so she's like, I think I'll leave her alone. Um, there was something that did uh, stand out to you, Jade, when you went back to your room. Oh? Uh, with your things, there was a copy of a book. Oh, no. The third volume of Traveling at Night, the volume you had been looking for back in London. With the note, it was. I apologize. I didn't see. I wasn't able to see you off, but I'm happy. I was happy to be able to see you again, and I hope that we can see that we can see each other back home, Tadpole. And it is uh, by your by uh, a friend you haven't heard from in a long time, named Clarence. He was someone who was one of your only friends in school, and he. Mm. Looked, at, looked after you and you looked after him and he had been traveling ever since uh, university. Okay, well then she definitely... Oh, darn. She was actually going to go to bed at a decent time tonight. Huh. <laughs> you know what? No, no, no. I think seeing this book, she's going to kind of be like, ah, oh, I think I actually need to try to sleep tonight. So she packed it away like deeper amongst her things and like tried to hide her stuff before they left the hotel and then cutting back to Ah, Solomon. Well, then your book. <laughs> Anyhow. So yeah, then um after writing her notes, she's going to cut like not even cut, just like pull some hair from her head and like put it under her pillow 
and then try to force herself to fall asleep by stating different book titles. Anyone else for a ritual? Nope. Yeah. Fair enough. Um... Are we in our own rooms, or are we, like, in one big room, or... It's, like, what's... a large, like, communal room. But if, but you're, like, able to, like, draw curtains for, uh, privacy. Okay. I think I'm gonna draw my, um, my curtains to give myself a little bit of privacy. I'm gonna light a couple of candles. And I'm gonna spend a few minutes, um... I once got to walk in the woods. I think now that times are getting slightly more desperate, I want to try to connect with that again. You are attempting to walk into the wood that surround the walls of Mansus. Yes. Okay. You do that, everyone goes to sleep, Margaret later than others, but with having a good company and enough gin, you're able to also fall asleep. And everyone, aside from Aurora, sleeps without dreaming. A refreshing, easy sleep. <laughs> <laughs>